Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, raise your paw if you love your pet. I sense a lot of hands all over the globe are being elevated. Did you know that one of the best ways to show your love for your pet is to take a pet first aid and CPR course? Now, in a pet emergency, minutes really do count. Tick tock. Knowing what to do to stabilize and to get your cat or dog to the nearest veterinary clinic could save your pet's life. April, which is when this show is airing, is designated as Pet First Aid Awareness Month. So it is fitting that our special guest today is a leading crusader in the field of pet safety. And she's a great pet friend ally of mine. She's been Pet Sitter of the Year from Pet Sitter International. And her company, Get Active Paws, has earned Angie's List Super Service Award. She volunteers and fosters boxers. And most importantly, folks... She's making a huge difference in the safety of dogs and cats as product manager for Pro Pet Hero. This is an online pet first aid and CPR program. Okay, folks, give it up. Let's give pause and applause to the multi-talented Kara Armour. Welcome to the show, Kara. Thank you for having me, Arden. It's good to hear you again. Oh, my gosh, folks. (laughs) We were having, like, technological hiccups all over the place, but we're on, and the show is recorded, and I'm glad about all that. And Kara and I are going to be unleashing a major announcement on today's show. It's guaranteed to protect more pets on the planet. So sit and stay. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Time for a pause. For furry ones, actually, sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the O Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. And as many of you know, I'm also the founder of Pet First Aid for You. Now, this is a veterinarian-endorsed course. It features the country's only active cat and dog teaching team. You know them, Pet Safety Cat Casey. That's me faking out his hello. And Pet Safety Dog Kona, as in ice cream Kona. I'm very nice, nice Kona. They're a pair of shelter alums who are making a difference in protecting pets all over the planet. Now, as much as we try, Kona, Casey, and I, we certainly cannot be in more than one place at a time. And we're committed to teaching as many people pet first aid as possible. That's why we're here today to share some exciting, great news. Pet First Aid for You is teaming up with Pro Pet Hero to expand pet first aid teachings all over the planet. Now, folks, check them out. Pro Pet Hero is the world's best. Yes, I declared it to be best online pet first aid and CPR course available. And it is led by the very talented Kara Armour. Okay, Kara, I just uh, kind of spilled the beans that Pro Pet Hero <laughs> and Pet First Aid for you are teaming up. You're, you're not backing out. You're not getting any cold feet, are you? 
not backing out. I just think it's cool that the best of the in person with the best, you know, cat and dog duo is teaming up with the best online. I mean, we're going to, we're just going to hit everybody. I know. I mean, Today is like the 74th anniversary of <laughs> Wonder Woman. I think we're Wonder Women. What do you think? Oh, I agree. I totally agree. I'm excited. And of course, the veterinarian in the course happens to be a woman too. So, you oh, know, yeah. Shout out to Dr. Bonnie. Yeah. Not to take woman power too high here, but we've got it going on. All right. Now, folks, you would think we'd be competitors, but we're not. It's very clear that Kara and I, we share the same mission. We want to give more people more options to learn pet first aid. And that's where I'm hoping, Kara, you can explain a little bit about your background in both first aid and pets. And then we're going to get into what we're doing here. Sure. My background starts, I mean, I I grew up with a myriad of animals and I was always the one taking care of them because I was always the one that wanted them and I was always the one bringing them home. Um, So, (laughs) Mommy, I found a gorilla. (laughs) I didn't bring one of those home. Thought about it. No. So I, you know, I kind of fumbled after college and I had used money that was given to me for an IRA. Um, When you're 21, who's thinking about retirement, right? That's right. I I bought myself a puppy. (laughs) And... (laughs) That puppy shaped my life and shaped my world and everything I do stems from that dog. And it just, it snowballed from there. I was a retail store manager, felt guilty spending all this time away from my dog. I was relying on friends and neighbors. They were wonderful people, but not very reliable. So what's your puppy? What was your puppy's name? Tank. Tank. What kind of dog? He was a boxer. Of course. Okay. Of course. So anyways, I was walking at the dog park and I met a dog walker and I said, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa. You get to do what I would dream to do and people pay you for it? And she said, oh yeah. So that was it. That was it. I got Patty Moran's book, Pet Sitting for Profit. I started my little business plan back in 2003 and hit the ground running. I happened to have met my husband at the dog park and uh, his sister set us up. It was complete set up. Oh, Gerard? Yeah, it's spelled Gerard, but it's spelled Gerard, but it's Gerd because he's from Northern Ireland. That's a whole nother Okay. Well, we just wanted to give a big pause up to Mr. G. <laughs> yes. Big pause up to him. He is the reason why he's the more than probably half the reason that active pause is as good as it is. But long story short, um, we got into pet care. We said we'd give it six months and here we are 13 years later. And, you know, when I started taking care of people's pets, I knew that their safety was my own pet safety was paramount. But now I had someone else's animal in my care. I needed yeah. to know if something went wrong with that cat or that dog got an injury what was my plan? What, how was I going to react? So I initially took classes at the Red Cross and I kept going back and I kept having the same teacher. And finally, after three years, she goes, you know, this yeah. doesn't, she goes, you know, this doesn't expire. And I said, oh, but it should because I forget and I have no way to refresh. Right. So long story short, 2009, I won Pets of the Year and I was introduced to becoming a, an instructor. And so I became a pet first aid instructor because I thought, okay, there's other pet sitters and pet owners out there that need to know what I know. They need to have this knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And in 2016, I found Pro Pet Hero and I literally just called them up and I said, you guys are awesome and I want to be a part of this. You guys are reaching the audience that I can't get to in Massachusetts. It doesn't matter how far I'm driving. I, I just, I can't capture it. So You know, they welcomed me and their family. Pro Trainings is the parent company. It's just happy as can be. And I'm happy to be here with you. And just we're going to take over the world. Yes, we are. And we just don't have that bewitched power. Now I'm really dating myself where we can twinkle our nose and be at two different places at one time. So after this, we'll have to learn to clone or whatever time travel quickly. But, you know, you bring a good point up, Kara. We're both very passionate about helping people know what to do and more importantly, what not to do in a pet emergency. And things happen because it's called life. But when people think, why would Arden Moore and Kara want to team up? My answer is clear. We can reach more people. And some people actually want an online class, right? And some people want that hands-on memories building. Well, also, there's going to be pet sitters in, you know, I was talking about this earlier, Fairbanks, Alaska. Right. <laughs> they, yeah. You know, I know you want to go. Come on. I do. I do. I love, I love Alaska. I, yeah. I've actually, I've actually been to Anchorage and I've been to Homer. That, that was fantastic. Oh, that was um, my did, father's name, Homer. Okay. Oh, that's such a great name. <laughs> well, I did not take a pet first aid class there. Let's just say that. I did learn how to fish and I ate sushi as fresh as can be. But yep. it's just something that makes sense. I mean, instead of dividing 
you know, you either take hands on or you take online, you can do both. And, you know, you and I have adventures and plans for, for kind of merging those, but I'm just really excited to be able to, this is not about who's better. This is not about competitors. This is about a better good. This is about, you know, my goal has always been from the time I started with my very first client till now, it's always been, you know, improving pet lives and making them safer and making them better. And the more people now that we can reach together, the better off pets will be. And that's the ultimate goal. Forget about, you know, competitions and, and who's doing what. Why not combine forces and, and get it in everybody's hands and heads? And let's talk a little bit about it, folks. you got to write this down. We're going to have it on the guest bio page. Go to ProPetHero.com and also Kara's main site, which is GetActivePaws.com. But when you go to ProPetHero.com, explain a little bit about pro trainings because it started out, I guess, for human pet first aid and other needs. And they saw the need with all the zillions of pets out there to expand to pet CPR and first aid. Exactly. So Arden, you and I are a lot alike. We do our homework. And I did my homework. I didn't just see this great thing and say, oh, they've got a beautiful website. I did. <laughs> I, it I has went, sparkles on it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's shiny. I had, you know, I researched them and not only were they bringing veterinary instructed course online to everybody, I said, who are these people? And it started with three guys, Roy Shaw, Paul Martin, and Scott Anderson. And Roy Shaw was an EMT, he was a paramedic, and he was doing what you and I are doing. He was teaching, except for humans, he was teaching human first aid and CPR in classrooms. And he was frustrated with the geographical limitations and the time constraints and the, you know, if somebody called out sick or if he didn't feel well. He and I shared stories about, I missed an entire protocol in my class because I was not, I was ill and on cough medicine. (laughs) <laughs> um, and I felt terrible. You know, I followed up with my students afterwards and gave them a little video presentation. But he started just like we did. And I was, that was the connection. And, you know, his team members, Scott and Paul, they had, Paul had the, the web design abilities and Scott had the web developer abilities. And that right there, they started before YouTube existed. I flew out there and I saw some of their first videos that they made. And, you know, there was a blue curtain and it was everything you could imagine back in 2003. And it's just a great, they have a great, passion for what they do. And I felt like I meshed with that, like you mesh with that. And when I found out they were interested in the pet industry, they just didn't have that in. And so when I contacted them, it was kind of like you and I getting together. It's just like, hey, let's do this. So they started with a great foundation like we did only in the human world and they've entered into the pet space. Well, and I think it's wonderful that we're going to be collaborating. We're going to be sending out a press release that has the link to this episode. And and because Kara and I really do care a lot about pets, you know, we want to give you the skill set. So that's why we do have veterinarians on board. And things change in pet medicine, much like they do in human medicine. For example, how we do chest compressions for CPR now on dogs and cats is different than maybe what people learned a few years ago. So, Kara, what what do you think is the importance of having that certification and going back to a class, whether it's online or in person, every couple of years? Well, I just think it's important because the human memory, If unfortunately, if you don't use it, you lose it. And right. thankfully, we're not using CPR all the time. I will admit you are using first aid often, especially if you're a pet care professional, daycare, groomer, trainer, pet sitter. You know, puncture wounds happen, injuries happen. Right. So, but I think it's important to keep that not only, you need to retrieve it from the back of your mind and make it almost muscle memory. And I think that's what, what the value is in making sure that your certification is fresh. Not that you just have that certificate on the wall, which is pretty, by the way, but it's important to have that knowledge and feel comfortable and confident, you know, and that's, that's what I think is the most crucial part. Anyone can take the class once and think that they know it, but if you don't use it, you lose it. And speaking of using it or losing it, we do want to talk about some real life examples that you and I have both encountered. And I know if you wanted to talk, I think you uh, had a situation. You pick one you want to talk about, and then I'll, I'll hit one after the commercial break. I'll pick a recent one. I had a foreign body obstruction. You know, one of my sitters was watching a dog she had watched before. She had gone out to the gym. He's not crated at home. He's not crated her house. Her house is pet proofed, as I would say. She doesn't have things lying around. And he's a little 11 pound skipper key mix. 
So, you know, it's not like he's a counter surfer, although right. I've seen, I've seen dogs do that. <laughs> the beagle that gets up into the toaster oven. Right. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so she came back <laughs> on a Tuesday. She came back from the gym. All seemed normal. He ate his dinner. He woke up the next morning and he was vomiting and he vomited twice and it was foam. And okay. that's, that's not something alarming, you know, foam. Okay. My dogs have, have done that. Sometimes it's, they get too much bile in their stomach and they throw up. So we didn't think too much of it. She brings him to work with her, which then he's, she sees my husband and my husband's like, Kona, Kona's the dog's name. Unrelated oh. to you. I know. <laughs> I know. Of I'm, Kona. Okay. Kona. I, love name. <laughs> <laughs> I just actually posted a blog post about this and okay. Kona, Kona was not right. My husband was like, mm, he's not looking right. He said, let me know if he's interested in dinner, how dinner goes. And sure enough, he didn't eat dinner. And we said, okay, that's it. This isn't normal. This dog is a chow hound. Something's not right. So we brought him to his regular vet because we were able to get an appointment before they closed. And even they put their arms up and they said, look, we don't have the machines to be able to tell what's going on with your your little pup here. So we advise going to emergency veterinary hospital, which we did. Okay. An ultrasound later, okay. our little friend Kona not only had a, a growth on his spleen, which this is the silver lining, he had a little round hard disc in his belly. So surgery, the object comes out in the pictures. They're gross, I know, but they're on that blog. I'll the, check it out. Yeah, the pictures, come, you know, the vet sends a picture. It gets texted to all of us. And my employee goes, oh, I know exactly what that is. My chair has been wibbling. It was the little plastic round disc that you would sometimes find on wooden chairs that's nailed in. Thankfully, you did not get the nail. That wow. helps the chair slide on the carpet. And that was it. And the spleen got removed. That went back for biopsy. It did come back fine, which is great. But older dogs and spleens can have masses. They wouldn't have normally found it. So it's like silver lining. But yeah, that was, you know, we, we saved that dog's life. And it was a scary incident. But it was because we knew that dog. And we knew this is not normal. This dog does not turn his nose up to food. I've seen dogs turn their nose up to food. Otherwise, we'd, you know, it'd be a little bit more difficult to find out, you know, is he lethargic? But I think right. that's an important story, paying attention and knowing the normal behavior. So when you know that they're not normal, how serious it could be. And I think you bring up a good point. What I try to tell my students that's a pet first aid for you, and I'm sure you're doing it with Pro Pet Hero, you need to be a pet detective. Yes. Because you need to know what is really normal in your pet as well as those under your care, whether you're a groomer, or a professional pet sitter, a daycare staff member, a dog walker. We are the eyes and ears as, and when you take a pet first aid class, we do a wellness assessment as well because you should be able to handle from uh, mouth to butt <laughs> <laughs> everything about the dog or the cat and catch things early to save a little bit of money and maybe to save their lives or extend their lives. Um, we're going to learn more. We have to pay for the show. So everybody, you know the drill, sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Hi, I'm Dana Humphrey, the founder of Whitegate PR. We have been specializing in PR and marketing in the pet industry for over 10 years. If you have a pet product or service you would like to promote, give us a call. We can help create awareness for your brand on TV, radio, magazines, newspapers, and blogs. Feel free to reach me directly at 619-414-9307 or learn more on our website at whitegatepr.com or follow us on Facebook. Oh, sure. It's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone. <laughs> That's right. We are animals. Deal with it. Pet Life Radio. Live life unleashed. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Betty White, and I'm inviting you to tune in to the Old Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Obehave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm delighted that we have Kara Armour in the house. Well, actually, she's in her house, but we're using Google Hangouts because we're just so cool. We're and hanging out. 
And we got our quiet producer, Mark Winter, working the audio board. But this is Pet First Aid Awareness Month, the month of April. But we should be practicing safe measures for our dogs and cats every single day of the year. And as we mentioned earlier on this episode, Pro Pet Hero, which is a fantastic online course program, you get certificates, continuing education credits, and a Pet First Aid for You, my in-person program, we're teaming up because we feel it's important to give people options. And we're going to work together to expand what we currently offer in person and online. I do want to give a little shout out to Dr. Bonnie Connor. She's your vet on your current program. And you want to talk a little bit about the program, how much it costs, how people can sign up and all that fun stuff. Yeah, the course starts at forty nine ninety five. And it gets you access, full access to all the videos for two years. So it's not kind of a one time and you buy. I know some other courses that you only have 30 days to access and they, they drop off and you're lost. So this also has, for those of you that enjoy the written word, it has a full, I believe it's 44 page pet first aid and CPR manual that you can download as well as your certificate, a new puppy checklist, a pet first aid checklist. Lots of interesting stuff like that. So the course really goes through all of the pet first aid. There's over 40 topics covered, including CPR and first aid. And Dr. Bobby Connor uses her own animals. So she's got her cat motor and she's got her Australian shepherd that she does a lot of the demonstrations on. So it's a unique course. The video format is very direct and they're in short. We like to call them bite-sized chunks. Right. So that for people like me that have the attention span of a gnat, we can absorb it and take it. <laughs> Take it kind of at our own pace. No, I, I appreciate it. And then we're going to team up and add more to it and have Kona and Casey on board as well, as well as some other veterinarians that are specializing in feline care, internal medicine, and, and also emergency medicine. Because I don't know about you, care, but it's kind of nice when you have someone like a Dr. Mike Lasasso talking to people about bloat. And, yeah. it, you know, it, that he's handled a lot of cases on that. And, folks, you can learn about that by going to the ProPetHero.com site. And it'll walk you through on how to take the Pet CPR course. And stay tuned because we will be posting codes and things like that for you to be able to, to use. But I, I just think people need to know this. I know, Kara, people, you know, they dress their dog up. They teach them agility, all these fun things. I, you know, I clicker train my cat. It's all great. But I just wish more people would have the light bulb turn on and realize something that we all should do as responsible pet parents is to know how to handle an emergency. Yes. I think sadly because, and this is our human nature and this is definitely one of our faults, we don't always think or often think of the what ifs. And I think because I've been in the position of caring for other people's pets, I'm more apt to think of the what if. What am I going to do if this pet has an emergency? Where am I, you know, taking this animal? What can I do to make their life better before I transport to the vet? You know, if we have an arterial bleed, how am I going to handle that? Because I can't just throw them in the back of my car and hope they don't bleed out. <laughs> right. Now, so I think, I think those are important. Pet lovers, no doubt, they're growing and they love their animals. And like you said, they'll buy the clothing and the best food and the best treats. But it also is that basic necessity to know what to do when something goes wrong. And even just knowing to recognize that something's not right. That's right. I mean, very important. And my story to share is I live with my sister-in-law, Jill, and she's a great gal, loves her dogs. Uh, We have five dogs and Casey, the cat. And one of them is, uh, we nicknamed Maddie, the white shadow, because she is a stealth, sneaky grabber of anything that's accessible. Well, Jill left some dental floss packet on her stand in the living room. And I was in my office and I heard... (laughs) Oh, that sounds good on radio. I rush out there. I'm the only one home. And there's poor Maddie that has crushed the casing of the dental floss and has it wrapped all over her mouth and she's passing out. So just like we teach you all in class, I was able to open her mouth and I was able, fortunately, to unwind the floss that's wrapped around her teeth. And the very end of it, as you all know, is that little silver clip. And fortunately, it was just sinking down her throat and I was able to gently pull it out. Now, as you're going to learn in our classes, if there's anything linear like floss or thread or anything, and there's any resistance when you try to pull it forward, you stop because you have a risk of, you know, strangling their throats or causing fun 
follies in their intestines getting all tied up. But fortunately, I just got it before it went down the throat. And I did what we teach you. We closed her mouth. I extended her head to make sure it was aligned with her spine. And I gave her two breaths, which is from my mouth on her nose with her muzzle sealed. And I saw the chest go up and down. And she kind of flickered and looked at me like, I love you. (laughs) (laughs) And I got to tell you, folks, we teach you, both Kara and myself, when you are taking a program and you are in a pet first aid situation, as Casey, my cat, would say, you got to live in the me now. You got to be there for the pet. And Kara, you can address that. Why is it so important, even though we're rattled, that we got to keep ourselves focused on what's happening right now, right then? Well, it's important for the animal. They're so in tune with us, even if they're going through an emergency. If we freak out, they're going to freak out. And that doesn't make anything better. You said it the other day. You've got to fake it until you make it. You have to train yourself to just be calm, take a deep breath, and use your training. And the more you review, the more you take these courses, whether it's you know hands-on, online, a combination of both, get the information in your head and change your view of the world. When an emergency happens, you're not going to freak out because that helps nobody. Your brain right. can't think. Your adrenaline takes over your brains. And you need to just say, okay, I have to deal with this. A new, right. day, a new day will come. And my goal is to make this pet, this situation that they're going through, as minimal and minor as possible and get them the exact care that they need, whether that's transporting to the vet and stabilizing them prior Or if it's just cleaning out a puncture wound to reduce infection later, the sooner you get to it, better the later. And it's just, it's important. Take that deep breath and really focus in on what you've learned. This is how doctors and EMTs and ER vets do. They, they handle this day in and day out. And because we don't, it's even, it's even more important for us to constantly think. I look around my world. I mean, I walk into client homes and I, I see dangers or I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sizing up the pet and sizing up the cat, you know, seeing, oh, okay, you're a chewer. I, I you know, my cat, I have to be very careful. She's a carboholic. She, Kit Kat, your kitty Kit, Kit Kat. Kat. I okay. love her. She is a carboholic and she loves bread. But what does oh. bread, because, you know, although I do live right. kind of out in farm country, I don't make my own bread. So what does bread come in? It comes in a plastic bag, right? Exactly. So we have to watch that. You know, shame on us for leaving that bread out. It's now stored in a bread box. But when and if she gets into that bread, we have to make sure that she has not swallowed or ingested any of that plastic. That could she could choke, not be able to breathe. That could cause a blockage. I mean, plastic isn't something good to be swallowing to begin with. So we have to think like this all the time. And this is in my own home and I go into client homes and if they've admitted that their dog is a counter surfer, we had a dog that they weren't in for crating and that's your own opinion, but This dog kept getting into things. And finally, the dog got into the wife's purse and he got into a sewing kit. And Uh my my husband called and he said, look, we're going to deal with this. We're going to get your dog to the vet right away because we can't see if he swallowed a needle and he is coughing. He's going. But please, for the future, to protect your animal and your home, I mean, your animal more importantly, please devise some kind of pet proofing. You know, put your dog in a crate, put them in a confined area that they don't have access but even with that, we had that accident with my employee in the, who thinks that the plastic bit's going to fall off their chair? You know? Yeah, one of our advisors is an ER veterinarian, and her rule is you go into my house, all you ladies, your purses are hanging up on these high hooks, because I don't want to be the ER veterinarian who has to take her own dog, who's a nosy Nelly, who's been sniffing in people's purses that we leave on the ground we don't even think about. Well, how uh, much, I, how much yeah. sugar-free gum is hanging around in those That's right. Why yeah. Xylitol, yeah. Now, the other thing that we can give a little tip that I want you to share before we uh, wrap up this episode, some people think they are doing the right thing. And so what do you do when you have a puncture wound and what's the right thing to reach for on the way to the veterinarian? What's the wrong thing to reach for? Oh, this is a good question because so puncture wounds are essentially not only are they something that goes through the depth of the skin. So you're talking there's several layers of dermal skin layer and then they could potentially go through muscle and if the tooth is long enough, the dog's small enough. I mean, if you think about that 11-pound Kona or even your yeah. Kona, or if yeah. Casey gets a bite, their organs are not far. I mean, right. my boxer's teeth are pretty long. I'm not saying they're biters. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. We got to do a shout out. We got to say, all right, I'm giving it up to paws up to the Debbie, the Walter and the Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Boxer babes. Walter's right here and he's whining because, oh, now we're yawning. We're anxiety yawning. <laughs> I'm talking and it's not to him, so. 
Yeah. But anyways, puncture wounds are very critical for many reasons. Not only do they cause physical damage. I mean, we're causing physical pain. They're also injecting bacteria. That tooth is covered with bacteria, it, right. with bacteria growth. So one of the worst things you can do is if you find a puncture wound, good luck, because that's the hardest and biggest challenge. Please, if your dogs or cats have ever been in altercation, your cat comes in from inside and it's limping, please, please check them over carefully. I mean, move that first. So you can see every follicle. And look for those puncture wounds because they are not easy to find. They're not big bleeders. And you're going to want to clean them right away. Even if it's deep and you know you're going to the vet, please, please help clean them out because it will just give less time for that bacteria to grow. But, and this is very important, while you're going to want to use an antiseptic, you do not want to use rubbing alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. Those are great for surface wounds, but this is something that is going inside into the dermal layers, into the muscle tissues. Hydrogen peroxide does those little bubbles. That's right. not good for skin. That's not going to promote healing. And alcohol, woo, that puppy stinks. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah. Yes. So things you want to use, saline solution. Now you're going, I don't have saline solution around my house. You probably do. If you have eye wash, if you have any kind of eye wash, which you should have for humans, it's also applicable for pets. Go get yourself some plain saline eye wash. Don't get the Bosch and, you know, contact lens solution. I'm talking plain eye wash, saline solution. That yeah. is wonderful. And that was a tip I got from my vet years ago. You know, I'd probably say 2004 because my dogs get a lot of puncture wounds. They're, <laughs> they're instigators. It's all yeah. their fault. Um, yes. So anyways, we have used that. It's, it's all around my house. But if you don't have it, you can Google, but you can make a 9% saline solution. That's what you're going to want to use. But please do rinse those out. Please do not cover them up. That's just creating an incubator. You put a, you know, a seal on something that's warm and it has bacteria in it. It's going to grow, right? Right. And also, you don't know the depth. So unless you can see it's a surface wound, okay, clean it and watch and make sure there's no redness. But please go to your vet. Oral antibiotics will stave off an infection. They get an infection in their muscle. That's so painful. That's so painful. So definitely puncture wounds, difficult to find, easy to treat, but not easy to tell the depth. You're best off going to the vet. I actually put a post on this and there's some gruesome pictures. I've got a right. client client dog that had a, a puncture wound. So. so how do people find out more about you, Carrie Armour? Go to some of the sites. Go ahead and reel them off. All right. So we've got ProPetHero.com. That's where you're going to get all the wonderful information about our pet first aid and CPR course. That's where you're going to bring Dr. Bonnie Connor into your living room with Motor and her dog. And you're going to learn. And then there's, you want to hear me, because I love to talk. Um, <laughs> if you go to blog.propethero.com, you'll get all my stories. I incorporate a lot of my pet sitting stories because I've got 13 years of them. I incorporate a little bit of my agility training. I was very privileged to be on the Super Bowl commercial with Tom Brady and the brindle boxer named Jack. I had to sit on that for five months. I sold my soul. Oh my to, gosh. Nice. Yeah. I sold my soul to Intel. So I blogged about that. Well, I had to sign an NDA. I love Intel. Don't get me wrong. Right. So there's just, I, I talk about things that are in our pet space that are related to pet health and safety. For example, there was that whole big mess going on around about the a dog's purpose and the safety of that German Shepherd. Right. I wanted to blog because I was specifically on a commercial with a dog. And I tell you, here in America, we have vets on staff. It's a serious deal that these animals are well cared for. They're given breaks. Their handlers and trainers are watching them. So I talk about anything that's in the pet space that generally relates to pet safety with an angle of, you know, I do pet sports. I'm interactive with that and, and also pet sitter. So that's kind of where my blog goes. And, and that's, and if you want to check out my dog walking company, that's, that's just been my, my baby for the past 13 years with my husband. I owe him, you know, more than half the credit on that. That's getactivepaws.com. That sounds great. And folks, this is Pet First Aid Awareness Month. And coming up is Easter for some of those that you, folks that do celebrate. Oh, those chocolate bunnies, chocolate bunnies, chocolate bunnies. And also folks that like to garden, just the little, Orange sprinkles from an Easter lily is enough that it yeah. gets on a cat's paw to shut down their kidneys. So my message to you is when you go to a florist or you're going to go to a gardening store, ask them for pet safe plants and flowers yes. and get them educated, too, that it's important to make the smart selection because nobody wants to spend Easter in the emergency room with a sweet dog or cat that has been poisoned by a plant that isn't safe for pets. So just that's my message on that one. We're getting into the spring season. Avoid your, you know, cocoa mulch on your gardening. Because and the bulbs. That, the bulbs are similar to onions. That's right. Issues. So there's a lot of little cautions out there. But darn it, our pets are our best pals. They love us through 
everything through relationships, through new jobs. They don't care if we have a bad hair day. This is our opportunity to give back to them and be their best pet health ally by taking a course. And you can go online and go to propethero.com or work with me and go in person with Pet First Aid for you. Any option. Kara and I are determined to work together to be a dynamic pet safety <laughs> duo, I guess, right? Oh, yeah. All we're right. Gonna, we're putting on our capes and we're going to fly around. Yeah, yeah. The cape here is, Casey wants to play with it. Casey, leave the cape alone. I want a <laughs> tiara. All right. Well, that's enough of that. But, you know, Kara has dedicated her life, folks, to making your pets safe and happy and healthy. And we're just delighted that she could be a guest on our show. Any parting message you'd like to give, Kara? I just want to say, keep learning. Walk through your world like something's going to happen. And take each moment when it doesn't happen as something great. But just be prepared. Be prepared for the inevitable. And if you love your pets, learn how to save them. It sounds great. I also want to give a big uh, shout out to the Wizard of Paws. He is our producer, Mark Winter. He is the executive director, producer of Pet Life Radio, which is the number one pet radio network on the planet. That's a lot of peas. But <laughs> he quietly is making good information zapped all over the airways from all over the globe. So I do thank him for that. And again, check out Kara. Go to ProPetHero.com. Check out GetActivePaws.com. She's got a great blog. She's doing things to help your pets. And until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, (laughs) delivering just two words to all you two-, three-, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave. Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>